Hello, this is Bob Moog from UG Studios. Today, we are really lucky because we have found some people who are working on a documentary about the history of board games. And we have with us Mr. Wayne Kirkpatrick, Mike Edwards, and Matt Huseman. So guys, uh, let's talk about what you're doing. The first thing I have, I have to ask is, to do a history of board games documentary, you have to like board games. And yeah. so I've seen Wayne's collection. Do you each have collections too? I do have a collection, not nearly extensive as Wayne's, yeah. but uh, definitely I go back all I go back to games that I had as a, loved as a child, and then carried those through to my own kids as well. And what are some of the, the games that you like playing the most? Believe it or not, I go to my go-to game that, as a child that ties into our conversation. My favorite game growing up was a game called SMES, SMES. the Nanny's Chess. You, have you heard of it? No. I okay. Don't know SMES. Who made it? So here's the whole story of that. Full circle. We're interviewing Ruben Klamer. He's the inventor. inventor. Lots of games. Yes, yeah, many yeah, games. He's a very we, world famous inventor. Oh, right. Game of Life. Game yeah. of Life. Game of Life being, yes. being the biggest, but he also did a lot of other things. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Yeah, so I walk into forever. his. They walk us into his closet where he has some of his, and there up on the shelf is Smash. My whole life has been spent playing this game with my kids and as a kid and had no idea that I was standing in the presence of the guy who invented and it. So it. I sell? felt embarrassed. How did it sell? <laughs> did you buy the only copy or are there a lot of copies yeah. sold? <laughs> I, you didn't honestly, ask Ruben. You no, I didn't ask him. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't know. But Game it, of Life is better known. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right, right. It was Ruben Klamer Enterprises. So it's when yeah. he was on his oh, own. Oh, when he was on his yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so that's like my childhood favorite And how game. about you, Mike? One of my favorite memories as a kid is my grandmother and I playing Parcheesi. And that's what, whenever I went to her house, that's what we played. Well, when you look at the history of games, Parcheesi, which was um, originally called Ludo, and it still is yeah. in most parts of the world, it's one of the the very early games that was ever invented. It would be yeah. probably in the first 10 or 15. Right. So that's really cool that yeah. it still is resonating, at least with people in Tennessee yeah. where you live. Um, <laughs> no, Parcheesi sells very well. <laughs> and then how about with you? What, what are some of the games that you uh, like? Of the classics, I would say probably my most famous favorite of mine and my family is Clue. I, I have to say, um, I think I like Wayne because Clue is my favorite game too. <laughs> if you had asked me that yeah. question, I would say, you know, as a kid, I could play Clue all the time. And as I got older, I was hoping that I maybe would meet Miss Scarlet sometime. <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and I always, you know, I always was, you know, trying to figure out how you, you know, kill someone with a lead pipe that was like where do you find a lead yeah. pipe and yeah. why is it there the candlestick i understood yeah. but the yeah. lead it's, pipe it's great it's and the fact that me and my fan my kids are all grown now but mm -hmm. we still play that game wow they come over and we get together and in fact when my daughter turned 30 mm -hmm. last year me and my other daughter created a live version of a clue game oh, in wow. our house it's kind of a surprise it was invited friends, and we turned our whole house into a clue game. That's really and, cool. And they, they dressed up, oh, they got all the weapons and everything, <laughs> so we're, we're into it. Well, you, <laughs> you and I are kind of simpatico, because when I started University Games in 1985, the object was to take the game of Clue and bring it to life. And our first product was a murder mystery party, which is very similar right. to what you just right. did in exactly. your house. Right. And we exactly. launched the company with Murder Mystery Party, mm -hmm. which is, um, for people who don't know, it's a, it's, a, it's a game you can only play one time. You invite eight people to your house, they dress up in costumes, and try to solve a murder, which is similar to what you did. Yeah. Although yeah. I've never seen it done in an entire house with a big group. I'll yeah. send you pictures. Okay, that would be great. <laughs> I would love that. That's good. Now, to switch gears a little bit to the documentary, um, where did the idea come from? Um, you and I have talked a little bit, Wayne. You're not talking about a game documentary about today's companies. You're really talking about going all the way back to the very first games in America. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, where the, where the idea first came from is I several years ago, I started uh, taking vintage board games that were beat up, you know, not mint condition, mm -hmm. but beat up things and repurposing them and making art pieces out of them. I would make these clocks and, and integrate different elements of the game mm -hmm. and, and they would have pendulums. And, and as I was doing that, um, as part of the, because I started selling them and I would, I would go to, to art festivals and do that kind of stuff. And um, I started wanting to give whoever was buying those pieces a bit of history about 
the game itself or or the inventor of the mm -hmm. game, you know. And and through that, and of course my childhood of growing up with names like Parker Brothers uh -huh. and Milton Bradley and all that, at some point you realize these aren't just companies, they're people. Mm -hmm. And what is their story? Mm -hmm. And I love history. Yeah. And I love the stories of, of people that contribute to pop culture or what you know, or whatever, or, or any kind of historical contribution. So, one day I was at lunch with Matt, and I was like, I can't find that much on it, uh, any kind of documentaries on board games or anything like that. And he said, we should make one. Oh, really? And that was how it started? That's how it started. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I was like, uh, yeah, we should do that. And, you, and you've <laughs> never made a documentary movie before. No, but... Have, have you? Mike has. Mike has. So and Mike's yes, the experience. And I have to. And, yeah. and yeah. flash forward to maybe yeah. a year or so later from yeah. that yeah. conversation, Matt was had an encounter with Mike, who had just done a documentary on PBS called Searching, Searching for, Augusta. for Augusta. Okay. And um, he was looking for other. He, he was with project. Matt and said, "If you ever have any ideas for documentaries, I'm wow." Interested. Matt told him this. He said, "I like that." And that's how the three and Stooges we, got together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and so. You've never done one before. You guys have done this before. Yeah. And what are you thinking now about the project? Are you more excited than when you started? Or I don't know really the nature of how these things work. Well, I just think just being here at, at Toy Fair uh -huh. has been energizing for us just to experience things. I mean, we're all storytellers, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, and so just experiencing the show and just, you know, gravitating towards it's been a really good experience. It's great. So and, and you're meeting a lot of interesting people. Yeah, yeah. the excitement it's, is growing. It's well, it's more exciting. I mean, for me personally, because I'm such a fan of, the, of board games and inventors and all that, and, and getting to meet people like yourself yes. and other people, it's like for me, it's an excuse. I would never get to meet these people right. if it was just you know, right. somebody that liked board games right. and made talks out of board But the fact that, I, that it's attached to this project, mm -hmm. um, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Well, I have to ask you another question, and I hope it's okay to bring this up. You told me a story about going to Stephen Sondheim's apartment. Yes. <laughs> can yes. you can you talk a little bit about McLaughlin Brothers and Stephen Sondheim and how, how how he reacted when he found out you knew you were a board game collector? Yes, so the backstory of that is, is I work in um, I'm a song Well, you wrote writer, a, a songwriter and you wrote and a musical. And, and you you've two, two musicals. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I, I wrote a musical that went to Broadway called Something Rotten and Stephen Sondheim came to see that show mm -hmm. and he liked it and I wrote it with my brother, so we saw that as an as a way to possibly get in to, to talk to Stephen Sondheim. Uh -huh. And my brother emailed him, and he said, "Sure, come, <laughs> come over." And we spent about two and a half hours in his apartment just just talking to him. But Stephen Sondheim is an avid game collector, and his whole apartment is decorated with with board games. And these wow. old board games have incredible artwork, mm -hmm. as you know, McLaughlin yes. Brothers early. They, what, what they would do is they would hire professional painters to paint these beautiful murals that went on the front of the games. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who haven't seen games from pre-1920, it's worth going onto eBay and looking yeah. because mm -hmm. they're absolutely remarkable. Beautiful art. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was talking to him. Uh, we, we had talked about musicals for a long time, mm -hmm. and it there was a, a break. I think he got up to get himself another drink. Uh -huh. and, and, um, and I, I said something about I said, so all these, these board games, I mean, he had uh, shelves full of old toys uh -huh. and games and stuff. And he talked about his uh, early days of collecting these games because mm -hmm. they were, they were uh, ways, cheap ways to have nice art. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just happened to go, I said, oh, is that a McLaughlin Brothers? And he's like, and he perked up. He said, oh, wow, you do know your stuff. He yeah. said, come here. You want to see this? And, it, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you, what you told me was, it was like now you were inside. It was a whole different yes. Stephen Sondheim after that. A, a, yeah. an interest that, that he probably did not expect mm -hmm. to share. To me. Well, and the same thing happened when we met. I, uh, I was talking to Kevin uh, McConnell, who's a Broadway producer, and in the middle of the conversation, he said, just a minute. And he did what some people do that you might think is rude. He picked up the phone and called someone. And he put the phone down, and then he said, you're going to meet with Wayne. And it was because of this project. Exactly. And because he thought we would hit it off, and it's been great. And now, he was right. And he was right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He usually is. Yeah. So 
what what's next right now you're interviewing people you're working on content you're working on pull it together mm -hmm. to actually finish you've got to film and have a script and um edit and then find someone to broadcast it what's yeah. the timetable and do you have any idea when people would be able to actually see this well as I'm that's the course of question. documentaries yeah. they're they're a gigantic treasure hunt and uh -huh. that's kind of the fun of it all and mm -hmm. so well, that's part of the being, being here is, is that treasure hunt because every time you turn over and discover one person such as yourself, you unveil 10 other people and stories. You know? <laughs> so is it ever done? Right. Well, at some point you have to cut it off, right? But so, we're you know. We're in the phase of yeah. gathering content. We're, so yeah. do you think we're in February of 2020? This is going to be on YouTube for a long time. Right. If people are seeing this for the first time in 2023, do you think we can say it's coming soon? <laughs> we, can, we can say it's coming soon for a long time. Okay. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we, it will be coming sooner than later. Okay. Yeah. By 2023. Yeah. I'm okay. Sure. So if it's 2023 and you're watching this, you can find. The working yeah, title, History of Board Games. We may change it, but that's the title. Yeah. And you can find it. Um, go to the website, boardgamesthemovie.com, and it'll tell you in 2023 where you can see <laughs> it. And, and give us any kind of, it's like, hey, have you ever met so-and-so? And, -so? and um, if you happen to be a game inventor who has a published game, or you have relatives who made contributions over the last hundred years, and you have articles about them, or you have any old video, contact um, Kevin and Matt and, and um, Mike, and you know, let's help them make the movie, and you can be part of it. Yeah, It'd be yeah. a user-driven production. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Thanks no. For having us. Just yeah. Well, this is great. Well, yeah. I love you guys being part of this, and this yeah. is the very beginning of our network, and. It's great to have we you. We look forward to coming back and giving you an update. Maybe we'll show a trailer on the show. That's a deal. Yeah. We'd yeah. love to have a trailer. Yeah. yeah. That's a deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll Perfect. All right. Thank you all very much. And that's it for today from Eugene Studios.